Alright guys, how's it going? This will be a slightly longer tutorial than I normally do, but hopefully by the end of it, we'll create something pretty cool. Uh, the objective is to generate particles from a mesh and then we'll instance on the particles. So, let's delete the cube and let's add another cube. Has to be done. Sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cube and I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to hit delete and I'm going to delete the edges and faces which essentially leaves us the points or verts. I'm going to go back into object mode and then I'm going to select the particles here on the right. I'm going to add a particle system. Now I already know that it's 8 points just by looking here down the bottom right. So for the number I'm going to assign 8. Now we'll leave everything set as standard at the moment. And what you'll see here is you'll just get one point generated from the middle. So if we go down to the source tab here, we can emit from the vertices. Now if we play it again, you'll see that it comes from the bottom point here. And this is because random order is selected. So if we take that off and go back, you'll see that it's changed position. And the reason this happens is, is because it actually uses a point order. So if we play it through, you'll notice that the particles are generating from each point. Now how do I know this? Now if you go into edit mode, and make sure in your preferences, in the interface you have developer options enabled. If you come up here to the right, in the overlays, you can actually put indices on, vertex IDs, essentially. So we can select the points, and if you take a quick look, it's pretty hard to see, you'll see that this is point 0, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, 4, 5, etc. So if we go back into object mode and we play, this, uh, play the particle system, 1, 2, 3. So knowing the point order of a mesh is pretty handy. Now, we want all these points to be generated at the same time, so if we change our frame start time to 0, and the end to zero, all our points are generated. Now what can we do with this? So for example, we can add in a mesh, a plane. Let's bring it down and scale it up. We can then go to the physics options here and we can make it a collision object. And if we now play the particle system, we now have physics. Now you'll notice that the lifespan of the particles pretty much dies off pretty early. So if you go back into the cube, you can change the lifetime to 250 frames, for example. So that's a pretty cool effect. So what can we do with this effect? Well, I've downloaded an object from Sketchfab, I believe. So I'll import it. Now same again, what I'll do is I'll go back into, I'll select the object, I'll go into edit mode. And you'll notice all the vertices is on. So I'll take that off just so we can see. I'll hit delete, and again we'll delete the edges and faces, which will essentially leave us points. I'll go back into the object mode. I'll make sure that we're selected on the skull. In the physics tab, we'll repeat the same process. We'll We'll add a particle settings. Now the number, the vertices is down the bottom, so it's 15,584. The frame start, we want zero. The end, we want zero. The source is the vertices. Now this is where you're going to see some crazy stuff. So for the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly hide the cube, and I'm going to quickly hide the plane, so we've got something a bit easier to see. Now in the viewport display options down the bottom here, we can actually change the size. We can also change how they're displayed, uh, rendered, none, point, circle. So we'll leave it as rendered for now. And we'll go to the render tab. What we're going to do here is we're just going to quickly create a mesh in a cube. Now that's a good size indication, it shows that the cube is one meter. So let's go down to S and let's scale this right down. Something like that. Uh, we'll just check the size. 0 0.089. I'll select the skull. 
I'll go into the particle system and I'll go to render. Render as and we'll select object. Now what this will do is it'll bring up the instancing for the object. So we just created a cube, so it's called cube001. And this is a good example why you should always name things and keep things in collections. So what I've done here is generated a cube on each particle. Now if object scales ticked and we scale the object, you'll start to see things moving. So now we've got this really nice particle system thing going on. Sort of kind of voxel. So with the skull selected, if we come to the spanner, you see here that we've got convert. So what that essentially does is it converts the particle system to an actual mesh. Which is pretty handy because it gives you the option to actually export out your mesh. Or you can actually individually move cubes rather than basing it on the particle system. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you. You know what to do. Like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace.